Hola, buenos dias. And the day has finally come. There's a program in Mexico right now called the Regularization Program. And we are here in front of the building to apply for and hopefully get our four-year Mexican residency. Hi everyone, we're Aaron Lori. Welcome to our channel, Plan Free. In today's video, we're going to describe for you Mexico's regularization program for residency. We're going to talk about why it's so special, its requirements and benefits, and we're going to share with you our experience of just having gone through it successfully. Mm -hmm. In the last three days. All right, first off, what is Mexico's regularization program for residency? It's a program that was born out of the pandemic where a lot of people were either not able to get back to the country of their origin, where they're from originally, or they didn't want to return to it. And so Mexico created a program with lower barriers of entry. Basically, they made it easier to become a temporary resident, lowering requirements in several different areas. And not to mention costs. It's one of the lowest cost residency programs that we know of available today in a country that you would actually want to become a resident in. The reason why the regularization program is so special is for a couple of reasons. One is, for the first time that I know of anyway, you can initiate, apply, and finish this program from within Mexico. Whereas in the past, most of the time these programs would have to be applied for when you're outside of Mexico. So it's a big difference. The second thing is, is that it's uh, available for a limited time. We understand that this program will discontinue at the end of the calendar year, year of 2022. And the third reason why it's so special, as I mentioned earlier, is the low cost of entry. At the time of recording, it's late May 2022, and we paid about $2,400 Canadian for both of us to apply for and finish this program. Those fees will likely change uh, over time over the next year, but as of right now, that's what they are. So for two reasons, you'd want to, if you're interested in this program, you'd want to proceed and probably avoid procrastination on it because they've stated up front it's going to be a limited time and just like everything else in the world, the fees will likely go up from the ones that we're going to describe in this video. I might even add a, a, a small uh, additional point that the time required from start to finish of the process um, is the shortest, uh, the shortest uh, around. For instance, if you're starting temporary residency process from outside of Mexico in your own country, you have to wait for the consulate appointment and then at some point you need to get yourself to Mexico to finish the application process. Here was a matter of weeks, maybe at most a month, right from the day we started inquiring about it, the application, getting our appointment, getting to immigration office to complete our appointment and holding our green cards in our hand was it was a matter of three or four weeks in total. All right, let's start off with the qualifications slash requirements of this program. So to qualify for the regularization program, you need to be in the country of Mexico in order to start the process and complete the process. And you cannot leave while the process is in process. The second requirement is that you must have the traveler's tourist visa that it's called the FMM you must have that and it must be already expired now one little note on that is whoever you choose as an agent might be able in our case she did to check before it's expired to see if you qualify but you cannot actually have your appointment on immigration until your FMM card is expired so if it expires your 180 day tourist visa expires on the 10th you can only actually go into immigration on the 11th of the month and the third requirement to complete the regularization program is you must have a stamp in your passport from some time in the last one to three years. So we're recording this at the end of May, like Air said, 2020, too. And you must have a stamp in your passport from 2021 and one in the la and one more stamp in the last one to three years before that. We had a stamp from 2017 and we qualified. Some agents in some states we heard were checking for a stamp in your passport from 2019 and then 2021. For whatever reason, you just wanna get your information to your agent and just double check with them and double check with immigration. So those are the three main requirements. The second aspect of the regularization program that we'll talk about is what are the benefits 
for the program, why would you consider doing it for yourself? One of the benefits is, let's say you're already in Mexico and you really don't want to leave. Well, this program allows you to apply, initiate and complete the process from within Mexico, which from our understanding is a unique benefit within the realm of residency programs offered by Mexico. Mm -hmm. Another benefit of this program would be that you don't have to prove financials, whereas if you were to apply for temporary residency to Mexico outside of the country, you're almost always going to be asked and have to prove financials. So this is a big step of uh, streamlining that you don't have to bother yourself going through. Another benefit is the overall low cost of the program itself. I think the cost for Lori and I both to acquire our temporary residency through the regularization program was $2,400 Canadian. Something like that, yeah. Give or take. And you know, another uh, benefit that I'll list is that for the $2,400, we chose to pay for all four years of temporary residency. So receiving four years temporary residency in exchange for $2,400 Canadian is a pretty good deal when we compare that to other countries that you might even consider getting residency from. When I compare that to Panama's Friendly Nations uh, visa or the current version of it, which I like to call the not quite as friendly nations visa, Panama has brought that back, but there's certain requirements uh, that you have to um, put in place now for them to, to honor that. And also the cost of it is uh, almost quadruple the amount. So when I start comparing it to other countries' residency programs, this one really stands out for cost and duration mm -hmm. and just overall ease of uh, making it happen. Yeah. Well, why did we do the regularization program? We're hopefully going to share with you some of the reasons, uh, the perceived benefits for us in our scenario. When the uh, world shut down originally, when the pandemic started, Lori and I were in Bali, Indonesia, and uh, the initial travel restrictions were, were made it very difficult for us to return from Indonesia to Canada. Now, when you compare that to Mexico, Mexico remained an open, welcoming country the entire time through and has been to this day. So one of the reasons for Lori and I to add an additional residency is because if the world was to react to something like this in the future, which I think is very reasonable, here we are th three years later or whatever it is, and we're still under pandemic living conditions, if we wanted to return from somewhere foreign, gaining residency in another country, in this case Mexico, gives us the option of another welcoming, friendly country that we can turn to in the scenario that our home country has placed uh, too many restrictions for us to return home or to return home you know, somewhat smoothly. Another benefit to us is that it provides an option for us to look at diversifying our assets. Right now, currently, and you might be able to relate to this, we're 100% vested in the Canada basket. So all of our eggs are in Canada. We're not saying we're going to, but we would like to have the option of placing some financial eggs in other countries' baskets so that we're not so reliant on what's going on in our one country that we're from. Mm -hmm. The fact that we could gain a four-year residency without having to prove financials for a fairly low cost while being in the country, those just started to add up to where we're like, now that we know we qualify, we should jump on this program. And so that would be another benefit to us, and we certainly did jump on it. Mm -hmm. It's a very low cost program, that's another benefit. If you're already vacationing or traveling in Mexico and you find that your visa is going to expire, another benefit of the program is you can do it while you're in the country, from start to finish. Right. And you don't have to worry any longer about getting the 180 day stay uh, when you arrive to Mexico because as you may have heard and we've heard multiple times that is no longer a slam dunk guarantee to receive 180 days when you're traveling into Mexico. We've heard many times where people were expecting to come down to their house that they live in for the winter and instead of receiving that 180 days that they've been accustomed to they receive like 21 or 40 or 90 yeah. and so for us and for others the regularization program will make all of that uncertainty go away. Because you're now a temporary resident in Mexico, you have a green card, you can come and go in as few or as many days as you want. So for all of those reasons we just described, that is why we chose to go ahead and do the program, apply for our four-year temporary residency in Mexico. Yeah. Yep, and that's why you may find yourself wanting to pursue the regularization program also. Please uh, describe to you our experience with the program. 
We first were introduced to it when we were living in Puerto Escondido. We had some friends and uh, different acquaintances that were talking about this regularization program and we didn't know anything about it. So obviously we started asking them some questions. Once they started describing the program, we asked them to put us in touch with their agent, which they did. Started to investigate what the parameters might be through this agent. And at the same time, we contacted two other agents and lawyers in different areas of the country to go ahead and gather as much information as we could so we could choose the best path for us. Now different states and different regions of the country have different requirements and so when we found out which state and region and agent was going to be the best for us, we selected that person mm -hmm. and we flew to where they were at. So this is very likely going to be a scenario for you. You might have to change locations within Mexico because it's a massive country to go where it's going to suit you best and that's what we had to do. Mm -hmm. And you will actually have to do that because you have to physically show up at immigration to complete the process, fingerprints and all that, so. Yeah. In our experience at the time this is being filmed anyway, which is late May 2022, it took us about uh, three weeks from the time we selected our agent to when we actually had our appointment and were physically in the immigration office. So you should also plan for a three to four week leeway under current conditions between when you want to uh, initiate the program mm -hmm. and when you want to have your appointment. It's not a scenario where you just roll out of bed, call your agent and say, hey, can we go into immigration this afternoon and get this done? You're probably looking at three or four weeks, okay? So just know that. Yes, and each state is really different. It, it totally depends. Yucatan, Mexico City, where we, Jalisco, or where we applied in Nayarit, each immigration office is so different. Some have one appointment per day, some have five, some are booked all of May, all of June already. It really, you have to ask all those questions ahead of time to your agent. When, do you, when are they booking appointments for? And you decide for yourself, hey, am I gonna be in Mexico in that month? Can I get to your state in that time frame? One of the questions you probably have at this point is, well, what are the costs going to be for me to do this program? And so Lori will run through the costs. Uh, now this is again at this current time. I would imagine like this program, it's not gonna last forever and the costs will likely increase as we go here, specifically yes. for agents and lawyers. So we'll describe what we experienced. Yeah. Well, the first cost is a fixed cost. Again, we don't know if immigration will increase their costs, but at the time of this recording anyway, there's three fees. And when you roll up all those fees, the total cost at immigration, when you pay it at the bank, is 14,096 pesos per applicant. That shouldn't change a whole heck of a lot, but again, it's Mexico, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So that's, we'll call that a fixed cost. Your, your second and last cost really is your agent cost, and it's somewhat fixed as well, but as the demand goes up and as it gets harder and harder to get appointments, anything can happen. So those costs we saw vary anywhere from 5,000 pesos up to 22,000 pesos per applicant. So how, where the range falls there is, let's say 5,000 pesos for someone who's just a friend, they happen to know the immigration system, they know where the office is located, they can speak Spanish, but they're just a helper, they're just a, a buddy, a friend who knows the system. The next level up is someone who's a little bit licensed, maybe they have a degree, but they're acting as a somewhat of a professional. They might be mid-range, 8,000 to 10,000. The upper range where we heard was over 20,000 is for a lawyer. Um, just, just a friend to friend advice here, you really don't need a lawyer to complete this process because it's not a legal process in Mexico, it's an immigration process. So you can go with a lawyer's office and pay a lawyer fee if you want. We didn't feel we needed that. The third way you can do it is zero cost where you can try to go it alone without an agent or a lawyer. That's a good point. People do that. Now if you're listening to this video and let's say you're fluent in Spanish and uh, you've done an immigration or a residency process before, mm -hmm. you might want to go ahead and do it on your own. I can say from experience, having gone through this and watched other people go through it that day in the immigration office by themselves, I admire you for doing it by yourself or trying to do it by yourself. To my perception, that'd be like punching myself in the face. So I would not do it alone. If I had to go through it again, I would again pay for the help because yeah. you could clearly see the value in the help. Even with the agent that we chose, which was one of the lower cost options, that person was diligent in their work from start to finish, committed to our case to see it through to completion, in addition to the other two people that she had there that day, 
we were happy with her commitment yeah. to the process. We could clearly see areas where her knowledge of the inside processes were, were helping it along. And even with that, we got there almost at opening mm -hmm. and we were still there when they were shutting the lights off. So mm -hmm. you should account for and plan for an entire day in that immigration office. On the flip side of that, people in there trying to do it by themselves, oftentimes they would have to return two and three times or two and three days to get the same amount of things done and uh, ultimately get that green card in their hands. Totally worth the money to hire an agent. Just as a side note on hiring an agent, we definitely recommend hiring an agent to help you through start and complete the regularization program. But the side note is that these agents are really well versed in the whole temporary and permanent residency programs through immigration in Mexico. So if you are someone who is living outside of Mexico right now, you're an American citizen, British citizen, Australian, Canada, whatever, you can start your process in your country with your consulate, Mexican consulate, and then when you arrive in Mexico, hire an agent to help you complete that process. It's well worth the money. If there's some information that maybe we didn't cover for you or if you still have some questions, go ahead and leave your questions and comments below and we'll do our best to get you the information you need. We are Aaron Laurie. This is Plan Free. Thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, do the things that help support this channel grow for free. It takes just a second to press the like button, hit subscribe and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. On that note, we recommend you watch this video next.